Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our third Wednesday of our Advent Midweek Worship Services. And uh, thank you so much, too, for participating and donating for ELCA Good Gifts, as well as our can drive for Calvary Food Pantry. We had a, a really good collection last week, so thank you very much for that. Uh, let's prepare our hearts for worship with the music of the prelude. I invite you to stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of the stars of night, companion even as this day ends, breath over the deep waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you this day. Some of our sin we know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which we are ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore us, that we may rest in peace. Amen. By the mercy of Almighty God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Merciful God, be present and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find rest in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading from tonight, for tonight is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We've been doing a series as we look at gratitude, and we're using the second lessons of each week during Advent. So week one, we looked at how gratitude for others leads us to God. Last week, we looked at how gratitude leads us to prayer. And tonight, we're going to look at how gratitude leads us to joy. And we touched a little bit about the difference between happiness and joy last week. And tonight I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. Joy is a funny word to look at. In the Greek, it is rarely found in pagan writings. They have a word for it, but it seems like they are trying to grasp it, what it is. They were challenged in how to experience it. And so they understood joy as a virtue. They understood it as something that came from wisdom. They understood it as a greeting of the gods. But they don't seem to have really been able to put their finger on what it was, and so they rarely use that word. Now you come to the New Testament, that same word in the Greek for the verb or noun when it says rejoice, it's all the same word, rejoice and joy, 16 times just in the book of Philippians, 359 times in the New Testament. And yes, I do use Bible software. I, <laughs> nine days out from Christmas Eve, I don't want you to think I'm sitting here with 351, 352. <laughs> Yeah, 359. That's a lot. And the early Christians, they understood and read and knew the Hebrew Bible. And so they understood joy from that perspective. And you can see that tonight, as Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Paul writes those words from prison. He doesn't know what his fate's going to be. He is writing to the church at Philippi. He knows they are suffering and will suffer for their faith. And yet he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Joy is different from happiness. Happiness depends on our circumstances. Happiness is an emotion and it comes and goes. Joy is there in spite of our circumstances. 
Happy is there because of our circumstances. Joy is there in spite of our circumstances. It's a big difference there. Joy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And I brought this rocking chair over here tonight because whenever I see rocking chairs, I often think of a friend of mine and of my wife's April, and her name was Jenny, and Jenny loved rocking chairs. And so she had shared a blog post I'd like to share with you from August 1st of 2015. She and her family had come to North Carolina to visit, and she was flying back and is reflecting on her experiences in various airports as she's making her way back home to Michigan. And she writes, here's a few of the things I learned in my travels. Charlotte has the cleanest bathrooms and nicest facility. You probably didn't realize, I didn't know that either until she wrote this. They have women at each bathroom checking to make sure the bathrooms are pristine and they're offering mints. They also have a lovely selection of rocking chairs that face a beautiful mobile of a plane that is also a clock. And clocks are not something one finds in airports these days, so not having a time-telling device is tricky. To add to this, there's a man playing piano for tips, and this makes for a lovely few hours of diversion. Unfortunately, I had six to spend. <laughs> and Jenny reflected on the Charlotte Airport as she rocked back and forth in some of those chairs that you may have seen there yourself. And my wife and I met Jenny through our friend Mark, and Mark was the best man at my wedding, and he and Jenny were married a little over 20 years ago. Jenny died in 2017. She was 42 years old. She had breast cancer, which eventually spread through her body, and she left behind her husband, three children, and many, many family and friends. It wasn't something that she deserved in any way. She was a devout Christian and a loving member of her community. And there was two things that really stood out to me about Jenny. One is that she was a very loving woman. And when she loved you, you knew it. She didn't do anything halfway. Two, she was strong-willed, tenacious. Uh, I'm just gonna say it. She was stubborn. I mean, one of the most stubborn people I have ever met. And she also had a devout faith. I mean, her favorite week of the year was Vacation Bible School. She taught Vacation Bible School. She led Vacation Bible School. She read her Bible nearly every morning. She did nothing to warrant cancer. I mean, she, she watched what she ate. She exercised regularly. She never even smoked one time. She had three children and a loving husband, and yet she died from cancer. And it was one of the hardest funerals I have ever done. Number one, I don't believe that God caused that cancer. That's not how I understand God working in the world. There are forces in this world that are opposed to the will of God and sometimes these things will happen and people we love die. And number two, I do not believe Jenny was happy when she died. I mean, how could you be to lose your spouse, your children, your life? How could you possibly be happy, but I do believe she was joyful because Jenny knew that God had been active in her life. She lived a life that was filled with gratitude for God's presence, 
for God's strength. And even in her worst days, God was walking with her, and she knew it. Faith, hope, love, joy, those are almost like a rope of four different cords. They bind together. Jenny was able to experience that joy because she knew that God's love was also so powerful. That God's love is tenacious, strong-willed, stubborn. That God refuses to let us go. And that even her own life was not going to get in the way of her experiencing that joy. She knew that God's work was not done. God's work did not end with her life that God was going to continue to work to make all things new and to bring us all back together. She had joy in those days. Happiness. Happiness comes and goes with circumstance. Joy is there in spite of circumstance. Joy is a gift from God as we are grateful for what God has done and how we have seen God in our work, in our lives. And as we are grateful for what God has promised to do, that joy, that gift of joy comes to us through that gratitude. You can see it tonight in Paul, writing from jail to a persecuted church. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. And you could see it in my friend Jenny. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. We are not promised an easy time as Christians. In fact, the Bible says the opposite of anything, that we will experience pain in this world. We will suffer. We will die in this world. But those things do not block us from the joy of the Lord, the knowledge of that God is continuing to work, that God will keep those promises made, and that our future is bright because of what God will do. Amen.
are gathered by God into one church through Christ, together with sisters and brothers throughout the world, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the Lord's peace with each other. Let us pray. Abiding God, under the cover of darkness, you bring forth life. Nourish us with the earth's bounty that we may freely share the gifts you have first given us through the one who gives his life for the world, Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. 
Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world to do God's mission. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Yeah.